All right, while I got the cylinder head soaking, get some new one off of it. You mark these valves. Confirm them up. Now this is a, I've already done this one. This is a front exhaust that was stuck pretty good. Got all the carbon off of it. Most of the carbon. Let me get the carbon off of this head here and then we'll mark them. I don't have a shop anymore. But I came out of my shop equipment really. Normally you do this in, a, in the shop in a glass beater, but I sold that thing years ago. That's good enough for that one. Now you're just gonna, since this is number one, you're just gonna pocket it with a one one punch mark, and then on down the line. You do the other. You do this is the exhaust valve. You do the intake with one punch, and then number two cylinder. You just put two pock marks. Like I said, you can use uh, you can use a marker on there, but truth is, a marker you ain't gonna really see it first time you. Once you go handling these things, that mark's going to disappear. And these things, I'll have to take a stone and file the ends of these to make sure that where this uh, groove is, it held that umbrella seal, didn't pocked up, or the keeper groove. A lot of times, uh, they'll get a little divot around the keeper groove here that'll stick in the valve guide where it won't go through. You actually have to beat it through. Which kind of screws up the guide surface. So if you just take a stone and sand on it a little bit, it'll show you it's got a high spot. And sometimes you can feel it. I feel a little one right there with your thumbnail. And that's probably maybe uh, the way that one feels right there. That might be two or three thousandths, maybe one thousandths. So you're going to want to polish those tips off, use a stone, you're just going to like kind of file it, you can't really use a file, but a uh, stone will work good. I've already done the intake for that one, you can go back in the box with the spring and keep it loose. While you're doing this, look at your stems real careful. If you see any uh, gall marks on it, if you're not putting valves in it, if you got gall marks really bad and the faces, of the valve faces are tore up. I mean, look at that. That valve face looks really good. And that's, uh, you just figure that thing's 70 years old. Got some marks up there around that groove. You can feel them. Like I said, if you just run your fingernail over them, you can feel them. If you want to measure them, you want to mark mic them. You're going to want to mic the valve probably in like six places up and down the stem. One, once in the down at the bottom, once in the middle, once there, and then turn 90 degrees and do the same thing down. And look at, look at your tips really good. If you see any gall marks on the tips, you probably want to replace the valves. Or if your faces are screwed up, unless you have a valve grinder and 
you know, some of these things, I don't know if th these are sodium filled or not, but if they're sodium filled, you're not supposed to grind them because they can explode. But I, I don't know if these are sodium filled or not. And grinding ain't the same as wire wheeling, so. Foul faces are beautiful. No pock marks on that one either. Other than uh, around the grooves here where they got a little divot or a little high spot on them right there. That one yeah, I, can, I can actually see. I can feel it and see it. So I have to, I'm going to uh, stone all of these. Let's go ahead and mark that one. That'll be number two. That's two little divot marks in there. Now that exhaust valve there looks pretty looks pretty crunchy crappity. But uh Yeah, that one's got divots up around it too. So after I get cleaning these, I'll show you how to stone them. Let me go find my stones. Okay. Gonna stone these valves now since I found my stones right where I left them again, sitting at my desk. Thumbnail. 
or that point is the heaviest. And then start working it around it. And polish just a little bit. Make you know, you look for a high spot. Feel it with your thumbnail again. See if you got the edge off of it. And usually it don't take long to get the burrs off of these things. The burrs that happen on these things around the keeper groove, they just happen from keeper grooves moving around and wear after so many uses. Try to move the stone around in a circular pattern around it. If you feel any heavy catch marks, that's where you want to concentrate on. I think we got all those on this one. Your valves are horrible, you probably want to replace them. What I'd say, horrible. If you look at the head valve face right there, if you see any pock marks at all, uh, and you're not sure if you can grind them because I, I don't know if you can grind these or not, I don't have a grinder, so I don't really care. If I had to get them ground, I'd have to take them someplace to do it. Your exhaust valves are going to show most of the wear because they take most of the heat. If you're not sure, throw a micrometer on them to make sure. I, I kind of know after having literally hundreds of hundreds, probably thousands of things of art, what to look for. You also want to look at your margin area up here. Uh, if it's been ground a bunch or it's really sharp right here on the edge, you probably want to put new valves in it. These ones, you should have like at least a 32nd of an inch there. And this one does. Intake valve looks excellent. You do these up here on the tip here. I can feel that one right there. You can feel it catching. Again, to pay attention to the tip there. If you see a lot of pock marks in there, like little metals messing off the top, uh, sometimes you can grind just the tip there, just a little bit if you have a valve grinder. Not a seat grinder, actually valve grinder, like a sill or a black and decker, where you can dress the top of the valve and dress the face if it needed it. But this thing, all valves look pretty decent, this thing, so we're just going to reuse them, go back in there, and I'll show you how to do that later on when you're dressing the uh, dressing, uh, valve seat on the head with the valve, what to look for. If the head's put really pockmarked too, you probably want to grind new valves in there or grind these valves in there, match them up. I don't have a valve grinder anymore, and I've used, uh, I started off using a uh, valve grinder, like old-fashioned valve grinder, valve seat grinder, excuse me, 
and then switch to uh, used, uh, I can't remember what that thing was, maybe a new way cutter system, which are like carbide cutters, which you do by hand. It's uh, used the new way one, it was kind of a pain in the butt, and then you switch to a Surdy handheld solo, I think it's called. That was a better setup. It wasn't great, but it was better. And then Big Mac Daddy was a Surdy 100 valve and guide machine. I could knock out a valve job on this this thing in less than a half hour. Perfect. That's a self-centering system. You can measure depth and vacuum test the valve seats. And don't worry about taking too much off of this using the stone. These valves are hard. Using this stone, you ain't going to take much material off of there. It's good for knocking off high spots. At least enough you can see them that if they're really bad, you know that you need to put valves in there. I'm kind of surprised at the shape of this thing being 70 years old. And the valves look like this. I mean, almost perfect. I can still see the where it was contacting the seat on there, which is almost perfectly placed. I'm still washing the cylinder heads. So that's it for these. After I clean the head, I'm going to decarbonize it with a sand blaster. I'm not using sand now. I'm using a, a glass bead. Sand works, but then it's, it's a little bit cheaper. But then you're dealing with silica dust, which is pretty bad for you as far as breathing it. Side sand opens the pores in metal. Glass bead kind of closes the pores. I don't have a blast cabinet anymore, so I, I'm using a little handheld job for this one. I think once we get moved and get back into a shop, I'll uh, get another blast cabinet. And, you know, you can use, I've, I've always used glass bead. I've had uh, good luck with glass bead within reason. A lot of people say don't use it because you'll never get it out of the pores of the metal. Well, you know, it's not that you can't get it out. It's a pain in the ass to get out. It, you can get it out, though. Uh, sand is worse because sand gets impregnated if you use sand. The silica gets impregnated in the metal that you just open the pores on. So the first time oil gets hot and oil hits it, it all kind of falls out. Glass bead, like I said, it closes the pores of the metal. It's, it's nicer. Walnut shells are better. Or I guess they do soda blasting you now too. I've used walnut shells before. They work. They just cost a little bit more. And... You know, I'm outside doing this here, so it's not like everybody's going to invest in this equipment to do it. If you use a little handheld, you know, I'll blow through $5, probably not even, probably 2 or $3 worth of glass bead cleaning this thing. Because I'm not blasting the whole thing to paint it, I'm just trying to get the carbon off of it. What doesn't come off with me uh, washing it. And my, my cleaning cabinet is a five gallon bucket with diesel fuel in it. Things don't, they just don't do things the same anymore. I used to have a hot water blaster, like a giant parts dishwasher, heated. 
extremely hot while almost like steam cleaning that somebody owed me some money for labor and uh, swapped out some labor for that thing and it worked worked really good until my uh, one of my mechanics left it on kept leaving it on every night when he closed the shop and it burnt the damn motor out of it burnt the heating element out so it wouldn't even come on anymore and it fried the electronics and the circuit board on it so that thing went wayside because it was an older blast cabinet it wasn't a huge one it was basically just big enough to do a small automatic transmission and you use uh i know i'm running on here i'm just running my mouth you use uh i use the general purpose cleaner in it which is good for ferrous or aluminum because i do a little bit of both now, ultimately it cleans better one way or the other so if you use the solution for the cast iron it actually cleans the cast iron better if you use the solution for the aluminum, it cleans the aluminum better than the general purpose stuff. But anyway, that's that's the preliminary on checking out the cylinder head there, cleaning up and checking the valves. Now I just got to do the rest of the valves. Make sure they're all alright. I'm not going to make you watch me do this. I run all and this stuff gets boring to some people because all they want to see is action. I'm just working along. I ain't got no action. <laughs> 